Hello, this is Joe McGee. You know, we've been doing seminars across the country for years. Seminars on marriage, parenting, men, money, and family. We want to encourage you to email us and let us know if this podcast has helped you. Or maybe you have joined us live at one of our seminars. If you have a testimony, you just want to tell us what God's doing in your life, please email us at mail at joemcgeeministries.com or you can contact us through our website, joemcgeeministries.com. There you will find helpful articles and tools to help you grow in God, your marriage, and your family. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to Mailbag Monday. We've got some great questions to answer today, Angel. Yes, we do. Let's jump right in here. Unfortunately, my wife and I did not really discuss children before we got married. I'm to the place where I want to have a child, but she says she doesn't want kids at all. Any suggestions on how to deal with this? To be clear, our relationship is the most important to me. Uh, that could probably be the same for thousands of couples. Uh, people fall in love, and all you care about is the moment. I love being with this person. I love talking to them. I love kissing them. I love holding hands. But we're not talking about anything important. It, most important thing I talked about in my first marriage, hey, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go to the movie? What movie do you want to see? Mm-hmm. What pizza do you want tonight? It was nothing important. Mm-hmm. Then once you get married, you realize, oh, man, I don't think we agree on anything. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about the future. Now, you can take some things. There's there's a great uh, survey I've gotten when I marry people, and I don't try not to do it much anymore. But uh, And I hand it to the couples, and I said, here's a 39-page questionnaire. I'm going to give it to you. You're going to fill it out, sir. Ma'am, you're going to fill it out. You're not giving it back to me. I'm not marrying you. You don't have to answer a single question on this questionnaire. What I want you to do when you finish filling it out, you you swap with one another. Here's my answers. Here's your answers. And you realize, and I said, guys, I'll tell you up front, you don't have to answer a single question. Like, well, how many dates have you been on? You ever had sex with anybody before? Have you ever been on drugs? Have you ever been arrested? What's your real hair color? Have you really had a job? Have you ever been fired? You just got, it's going to come out eventually. Mm-hmm. And, and what you want to do is make sure that, well, we're just pretty much, uh, t- if truth sets you free. But you're not going to ask all the questions. You're not going to think about them. Mm-hmm. I'm in love. And the bottom line is, I believe, just like the Old Testament people, and I do this a lot, you know, or Rachel and Jacob, God brought couples together. They didn't ask 49 questions. They didn't do 18 surveys. I didn't interview all of your parents. I remember, <laughs> and Ace and I laugh about this. I married my first wife. I just asked, you want to get married? And we paid a just a piece $10. And we got married. When I married Angel, I had to fly down. I had to meet the mayor, the mayor's wife, the uh, pastor, her family. It's like <laughs> I had to go through. It's like I was under the headlight for a solid week, but I understood. But I had never been married just once. First time, a second marriage, I realized, whoa, well, they, I should answer these questions. They need to ask this stuff. And so that's all I got to say on it. <laughs> well, I, this is heartbreaking to me. Uh, anytime one spouse wants a child and the other one doesn't. Um, I mean, it's something that would have been better had you addressed it prior to um, marriage, because now, you know, the expectations are different. I I was unable to get pregnant for 10 years. I did not think I could have children. And so um, and people would say to me, uh, you know, would you consider adoption, which I have a nephew that's adopted. I think adoption is wonderful. Um, But I just didn't feel like that was at that time the, the the way I should go. And um, I remember I'd always say, here's the thing. I just don't see myself growing old without children in, in, my, in my mind, in my heart. And so I would say it would be something that together you guys are going to have to discuss. You probably are going to need to go to a pa- pastor. Yes. Because that, that can become such a major thing. I know Joe has an uncle that they never had children. And when she, the wife, passed away, he stated that he regretted very At much. At the funeral. The saddest thing in my life is we never had kids. My wife that I loved, he did. They did love each other. Great marriage for a long time. But she didn't want any children, so they never had any. And they had a great life. They had great jobs, made great money. They did square dance. They went to Hawaii. They had a very full, blessed life. They went to church on a regular basis, great participants in their church. But no kids. Yeah, and there can be other reasons. I mean, I knew a young couple that uh, the the woman was afraid of it affecting her body, yes. uh, and didn't. I guess she she went to preschools and saw all the mom bodies. <laughs> <everywhere>. <laughs> oh Lord, is that what I'm gonna look like? <laughs> yes, that's that before, a big, before and after. That can be a big thing, and uh, fear of having children. I've seen people have that too. Yeah. So I mean. Um, 
Yeah, what if they don't turn out right? What if they have a bad one? What if they're, what if something wrong with them um, mentally or physically and they're handicapped? How, how do I handle that? You can't. You either realize, I think God wants to have kids. You go have them and you go yep. with that. Yeah, but I, I would definitely not just let this die because that could build in your heart to be something monumental. Well, it's going to have to somehow, like I said, you said the best thing. Go see your pastor and just have an open conversation. Um, if there's if there's somebody that doesn't want children, this is me, not God. This is me. If there's anybody that doesn't want children, there's a reason. Yeah. And it's it's probably warped. Yeah. Because God made humans and he gave them the parts to reproduce themselves. The first commandment he gave to Adam and Eve was be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Yeah, yeah. So, Kids are always part of the, the the goal. You know, there'll be plenty of children, plenty to feed them, you know. Yeah. Teach your children to the third and fourth, fifth generation. There's so many scriptures God was always planning on the next generation. So for some to say, I don't want any, that's just automatically against all all societies. That's going to make everybody saved, unsaved, say, Why? Why would you not want to replenish yourself? Why would you not want? I don't want the hassle. I'm afraid of this. This might happen, and you cannot go through life being afraid of what hasn't happened yet. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and that's where a lot of people. The devil gets a lot of people. Well, what if this happens? Well, what if it doesn't? Yeah, but what if this happens? Well, what if it doesn't? You know, and people would challenge. You know, when we've talked about it openly, uh, you know, I wanted a lot of kids. My dad had a big family, and I wanted that. And I know it's not perfect. I saw it. I saw the big family that it wasn't perfect. Right. But I thought, you know, and it was just very carnal to me. I said, listen, I don't want to go by myself. I want somebody to take me to Sunday dinner, you know, to send me on a cruise, buy me a Winnebago, <laughs> you know, come visit me at Christmas See, time. mine was, mine was, <laughs> I, I would like a condo on the beach. <laughs> my son, my son, I put it in him. When you get that one hit song, son, that's the first thing we're going to get, that condo on the beach. Yeah, I already got it. I got to pick that, sugar. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> and I'll be there with my mom, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, let's go to the next one. Uh what do you do when you have wait, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Let me go back. Okay. Bidip, bidip, bidip. <laughs> That's all folks. Uh what do you do when you have a fight with your spouse, you want to get past the anger, but you can see that you're not gonna ever agree on something. Sometimes there isn't a clear middle ground. No, there's not. Uh, there will be things in uh, couples that God's put together you'll probably never agree on. And that's why there's it's called compromise and serving and going the second mile and putting your shirt and your coat and give, giving it to somebody. It's, it's called love, and it's very sacrificial, you know. For God so loved the world, he did something for somebody. You tell somebody you love them, it's going to cost you. It's not going to be a grease, gravy tain right at Disney World. It's going to take some effort to love somebody. It cost God everything to love me and you. It did. And so when you, t- you get married, it's, like, it's going to cost you. And sometimes you're going to be things like, hmm. I mean, th- we laugh about it so much. Like I said, I grew up in a family. We drank Coca-Cola when I was a kid. I worked for the Coca-Cola company when I was going to college. And I like Coca-Cola. It's the real thing. It's on the bottle. When I got married, my wife liked Pepsi. I never drank a Pepsi. That's a watered-down children's drink. I almost think of Pepsi. And we fought over that for three or four years. And, and my mom used Tide detergent. Her mom used Cheer. I got some skanky stain. I don't want to cheer it up. I want some Tide. I want to get that stuff out of there. <laughs> and we disagreed on so many stupid things. And when a uh, guy was dealing with several years in our marriage, we were driving over to Arkansas to do a, a marriage seminar, and we're in a great mood. And I was just praying about something to myself. It was a nice day. We're not fighting. And uh, I'm trying to say, God, how come you're not answering this prayer? He said, because of the way you treat your wife. And I knew the scripture, First Peter 3. God said, you treat your wife bad. I'm not answering your prayers. I said, what am I doing? And I heard, now you don't have to believe this. And people laugh and they write me about it. I heard God say, your wife likes Pepsi. I said, well, she didn't know any better. He said, no, your wife likes Pepsi. And so I'm pulling in the parking lot and we got to uh, Fayetteville over there. And I pulled in and I, I said, hey, I need to repent. And I did a, you know, and she didn't know what I was talking about. Joe, you're crazy. No, I need to apologize. From this day forward, I'll never drink another Coca-Cola. I'm drinking Pepsi. We're going to use cheer detergent till Jesus comes. And I would make fun of the things she'd send me. After. And, and so I took her in the store and I wrote down all the makeup she wanted. If I love you, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to fight over this. This is not a heaven or hell issue. I'm trying to serve you. Uh, you know, you changed your name for me <laughs> you know, in the marriage. I'll do whatever you need. I, I'm, here to, I'm here to serve you. And so it's, that's what marriage is. Most people haven't got that yet. Yeah, I'd like to address this, but I'm still mad about what you said yesterday. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably still mad that you're mad. 
Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. Check. I, Check me. I am just kidding. <laughs> I am just kidding. I think the, uh, the, the, the benefit of being older when we got married the second time is that we realize, and I had a 12-year gap to think oh, about these oh, things, oh. Uh, is that so many times we are so caught up on things that just mean nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. How many times has somebody said, remember you ruined that Christmas because you were mad at everything. You can't even remember <laughs> what it was no. that you were mad about. Oh, gee. So yeah. it's just put it into perspective. I mean, you know, it's just life. Yep. It just, uh, I'm, I've just made a determination that I'm going to enjoy every day of my life. So, uh uh, regardless of what, all I can do is work on me. Yes, that's it. That's it. And and people still laugh. And I teach in our seminars on marriage. I said, listen, guys, a marriage is a funeral. Hallmark's got the cards all wrong. It should be. I'm so sorry I heard you got married. Because if you don't die at that ceremony, you're a half-dead zombie. Right. You're swearing before God witnesses. I want to spend the rest of my life living for this person out here. My goal is to make this person happy. I'm not going to cheat. Not a lie. I'm going to do anything illegally immoral. But my job is to make you happy. Good. That's my job. Good. All right, Joe. Are you happy? <laughs> I am happy. I'm very happy. I'll be more happy when I get that swimming pool. <laughs> We're that, working. No, not the one I didn't have to buy off Amazon for $60. <laughs> it was a good one, though. We loved that thing. <laughs> Wore that puppy out, man. Yeah, that was a good one. Okay, Oof. so, Joe, I am not a health nut, but I do try to take care of myself. My spouse seems to have zero desire to stay fit and has been consistently gaining weight since we got married. I don't want to lay down some ultimatum, but don't know how to motivate. Hmm, well, the first thing you do when you got somebody that doesn't want to change, especially for your spouse, the only biggest times you've got is praying for them. Lord, take blindness from their mind, light and honest understanding. But the biggest thing is uh, you got to address it at some point. I don't want uh, – and listen, we've done this in all of our marriages. Everybody's married, they've done this. Are you eating that? What are you doing there? You getting another bowl of that? You don't need more of that. You need more ice cream. <laughs> You're not going to change them doing that. You can just from time to time say, this, you know, we're planning on living a long time. And so the greatest thing that we did, because I had to, I had a huge life insurance policy. It meant I had to go get a full physical every year. Well, my wife took out a big policy because we had all these kids. If something happened, we wanted to leave them in good shape. And so uh, going to get the physical was a revelation. I never thought about it. Oh, the physical's next year. My annual physical's next week. Okay. So you go in and you realize, hey, Joe, you know, you gained another 27 pounds. You're two inches bigger around your waist, and your blood pressure has gone up. And and what it was, nobody it, it wasn't, nobody got mad. You just realized a professional doctor said that you're going the wrong direction, son. You're mm-hmm. going the wrong direction. I thought, okay, I need to do something. And, and sometimes, I remember two or three years ago by another physical here. Goes, hey, you gained another 15 pounds, you know, blood pressure's higher, going the wrong direction. And then somebody finally said, if you continue this, you're cutting years off of your life. Now, that got my undivided attention the first time he said that. Joe, you need to determine how long you're going to live based on what you're going to do. You need to get good sleep. You need to eat better. Doesn't mean you can't have some coconut pie, but you can't have it five times a day. Mm-hmm. You need, you know, there's certain things you need to do and not do. And so, unfortunately, for most of America, as we got older, uh, America's living longer. You know, in the turn of the century, the average age of somebody was around 48. Mm-hmm. Uh, today it's around 78 we're living longer mm-hmm. and we didn't think nobody could live this long well that's going to be money problems health problems so you're going to sit down and address to one another honey um and i'm no couples right now i've got one in mind right now um uh, the lady guy's always been in pretty good shape and she is she's a porker buddy she has put on tons and <laughs> inches and sweet gal you can't help but like it but, but you know when you say oh dear lord you know, is there a disease or something no you're just fat I mean, you're fat, fat, and you don't care. And now she's got real problems. She's having problems walking. Mm-hmm. She's having to get a little walker to go around. And she's not that old. It's just, what? Mm-hmm. you just got too fat. Mm-hmm. And they have shows about it. And people just, I don't know why they watch it, but people watch the shows about some at 600 pounds or whatever. But it is a real challenge because in America, there's food everywhere. Mm-hmm. You can get it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, have it brought to your house. Until you decide, I think I'd like to live longer. And so on the annual fiscal, my doctor said, Joe, since you lowered that blood pressure this much, I'll add five more years of your life. You lowered it down to here, I'll add five more years of your life. I thought, well, wouldn't it be sad? Wouldn't it be sad to go to heaven one day and Jesus hugs your neck and, hey, son, how you doing? You're here about 20 years early, but have a seat. <laughs> you know, I think that you, you could have lived 20 years longer, been a blessing to more people, been with your kids, your grandkids, helped more people, had more fun. But no, you decided just to pork out and come home early. <laughs> Well, I mean, 
you could suggest that uh, you could cut it down to a couple of pork roasts a day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was a bad joke. Bad joke. Uh, I uh, do love pork roast. <laughs> uh, but now I, I want to say this because I have fluctuated on my weight uh, through the years. Uh, for many years, I was very tiny. And now I'm not the biggest I've been, but bigger than I want to be. And um, But when you live with someone that is a health nut. That's tough, buddy. Now that is tough. It You already, uh, by the way you live and by the way you eat, are condemning the other person. No. <laughs> and many times, many times, it pushes them to go the opposite direction. It will. And so you have to be very careful. This, you cannot override somebody's will. And you can even sit, God will not do that. Yes. You know what you can do is sit down and say, "I'm concerned about your health," and have a loving talk. But to sit there and go while you're eating a salad and she's eating a Snicker bar, or vice versa, say d- have a look of disdain on your face. That's hard. So what you do is you push that person to hiding. And uh, then you'll start finding Big Mac cartons under your uh, car seat. <laughs> and everybody's gone through it, guys. I'm telling you. And so you have to be – It you have to be – what love does is prefer the other. So you know what? Love them through that. So, But be very careful to not condemn So, because um, that's a miserable, miserable way for someone to live. Well, the greatest thing that my wife ever did me years ago, she said, you know, Joe, if you don't get this thing under control, you know, you're just going to die, and I'm just going to cash in your life insurance policy, and I'll just marry somebody else. <laughs> that was that was and that, that was, was Denise. I me. still remember that. And I felt, and she said it so calm. Yeah, I'm, we'll just bury and I'll marry somebody else. I thought, oh, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, and somebody else is going to enjoy what you've been enjoying. Like, I do I better get a handle on this. And so it's hard. Anybody that's ever dealt with weight. It's hard. We live in it the land hard. of the It's it is a, very hard. You gotta, it's a it's a it's the decision you'll make every morning you get up. Today it, I'm, it is. It is. It is. But yes. it can't be done. And there's it people that do done. it. There are people right. that do it. And I'm doing it too in Jesus' name. And you need to pray. Pray some labors across yes. the path. You know, it's not just you, they probably won't listen to you. Yeah. Lord, they need to run into somebody at work, somebody at the mall, somebody at church. Hey. Yeah. It would that's huge because, you know, I used to take kickboxing classes and I did it with some friends and that was huge. Because then I'd have to show up, because otherwise they'd say something to me when we got to work. where were you? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Okay, guys, that just concludes today. Thank you so much for taking the time. We enjoy our Mondays with you. Yes, we do. And if you have any questions you want to submit to mail at joemcgeeministries.com. We'd love to hear from you. God bless, guys. Hey, thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we are here to help you get there. Make sure and go to our website, joemcgeeministries.com. We've got all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.